Let's make a sports poster composition with three player images. We're gonna be working with Sean Mott of the Philadelphia Phoenix today. Start a new document, 1080 by 1350. For the background, we're just gonna go with a white gradient background. So I'm gonna unlock this background layer. Let's add a gradient overlay. And I have it set to fading from white to this light gray, or I guess a mid gray. And you can kind of play with these settings. I just want to have like a, a subtle vignette around the edge. So we'll lock that in. Now let's drag in our three player cutouts. So we have three different images of Sean Mott. This one on top, you'll notice his feet are in the image. So we're gonna make that the smallest of the three. It's pretty common if you're doing a three player composition to take like a small, medium, big approach with your cutouts. So we are going to use this one in the middle and this one as the biggest one in the background. And one way you can kind of determine for yourself which one's gonna go where is this one, you can see the least of his lower body. It cuts off even above his waist. So when you put that layer in the background, the other cutouts are gonna cover up those areas so it won't look weird. And this middle one is the next most showing of his lower body. And then of course the front one, ideally we have feet included in the front cutout. So I'm also gonna fade these out using a mask. And I like to do that whenever there's just a harsh cutoff and we don't have feet showing, especially in these clusters. So I'm adding masks to both of the two back cutouts. And let's keep arranging these. So I'm gonna center this back one and maybe we'll, we'll move it offset to the right a little bit. I wanna make sure all the cutouts are touching in some way or covering each other up. Like it'd look weird if this one was way off here and the, the smallest cutout was over here. We wanna keep everything sort of tight together. So even this, like I don't like this gap right here. So I'm gonna move this middle cutout over to cover that. And then the front cutout, again, this gap right here, I would prefer to have that covered. And maybe we can make him a little bit bigger. Make the middle one a little bit smaller. And I don't go by a specific science of how to size them or what ratios they should be in. I just do it until it looks about right. So I'm gonna move him down a little bit and see how it, it's freed up this space right here. Now, if you had more cutouts, you might mess around and see what could fill the space better or maybe even adding in a fourth or fifth cutout. But we're just gonna use this empty space right here for our text. So when you're thinking about your composition, think about like where the open space is and where the text makes the most sense. We could shrink everything and just put the text on top, but I kind of like using the space right here and keeping the design tighter together. So let's go ahead and do that just so we can see the text. I'm gonna use this signature font I have called RD Signature. And we'll blow that up a little bit and then underneath we will put his name normally, Philadelphia Phoenix. And we'll use Termina for this one. Shrink that way down. And let's get some contrast with the name and team name. Shrink it down still, I think. Make sure everything is centered and that looks pretty good. So now we have the name nicely filling this space. So for the front cutout, let's give him shadows first, and we will just roughly get these under his feet and in position. There's one, and there's another one. Okay, let's make him stand on a phoenix circle emblem. So to do this, first of all, I'm gonna group these layers into Mott small cutout. So let's drag in this phoenix emblem. And what we're gonna do is use perspective transform, transform perspective. 
And we're gonna stretch it out this way. And when you drag the corners of that perspective transform, you can distort how it appears. And that's not enough, so let's keep transforming it until it looks right. That's starting to look better. I think right there seems about right. Let's move everything up just to give us a little bit more room at the bottom, maybe shrink everything down too. If you ever run out of space, I would just select everything and, and shrink it down a little bit. So this emblem platform, we're gonna give it a drop shadow, but we're gonna make this a solid drop shadow so it kind of extrudes in a 3D way downward. So we're switching the opacity to 100 and we're making sure we have some distance and making the size zero, which just makes it a solid block of shadow. And we will make this the Phoenix red color. And you can switch the blend mode here just to normal. Now let's give this emblem an actual shadow below it. And to do that, we're gonna group this layer into its own folder. And then on the folder, we are going to give the folder a drop shadow. And we'll switch this one back to the normal settings. So we'll change the opacity to like 40-ish, increase the size. Maybe we have a little bit of distance, so it's like sort of hovering over the ground. I like that. And now when we look back at our cutouts, one thing you can do to kind of increase the perceived distance between these cutouts is add your own shadow. So between this back layer and the middle layer, I'm gonna make a new layer and with a really soft black brush, I just want like a subtle shadow going over his shoulder there. So I'm just gonna start clicking to create some distance. And then with the shadow layer, we're gonna clip this so it's only affecting the back image. So you can see before and after the shadow. And then you can do the same thing with the middle image as well. And so we have our blank layer, maybe put a bit of shadow like that. And again, clip it to that layer. And maybe that one's a little extreme so we can take the opacity down because he's already pretty shaded. Another thing I like to do with light or white backgrounds is see how this middle part is a lot brighter than the edges just based on how we made the background. I kind of want to act as though that light is coming at the cutouts. And one thing you can do is kind of give a, a rim light, a soft rim light to all of these player cutouts and it's also going to further separate them from each other. So the way to do that is we're gonna select our back cutout first and we're gonna go to inner glow. And I'll move that out of the way so you can see. And I have the blend mode set to overlay and it's a white inner glow. And you can see it's just making the edges glow a little brighter. So this is kind of a lazier way to do some basic highlights just to the edges of your cutouts. So we can hit okay there and then holding option, you can click and drag any effects layer to other cutouts, and it's gonna copy those over. So one more, we will get the front cutout as well. And so we'll stop there. Those are the basics of composing an image with three player cutouts.